All right, we're going to start the recording for today. I'm going to uh, start out in a quick uh, prayer to get us going, and then we're going to talk about a time for kissy face. Uh, you got thanks for the opportunity <laughs> to be able to spend time together today. Uh, help us be focused on you and focused on others this week, and just help us to uh, find ways to radically love others uh, in the gifts and talents that you gave us. Um, all right, um, we thank you, God, and we're just so thankful. We love you. Amen. All right, so time for kissy face, guys. Um, so this is uh, being St. Valentine's Day coming up soon. I could tell you something about St. Valentine's Day, but I know nothing about him uh, except for that he seems to be a patron saint of uh, greeting cards. Uh, but besides that, I don't know a whole lot. So I'm going to talk to you about another story. Uh, so... Once upon a time, a number of years ago, I was on a construction site, and there was this uh, contractor I was working with, a big burly guy. This uh, contractor I was working with, this big burly guy. Uh, we were going over what we were to do for the week. Shane, Shane, get yourself together, man. Uh, <laughs> this big burly guy. We were going over what we were to do. This week. Okay. All right, so Shane. Uh, on this construction site. We're, we're working on Boulder Creek, trying to figure out uh, how to build a structure, a concrete structure, which uh, Shane and his guys were not doing a great job with. Uh, but um, anyways, he came back and we were talking back and forth. And the one morning or night, I forget what it was, I wake up and I have these three kissy faces on my screen from Shane that says, kissy, 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 I love you, good night. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> how interesting. Uh, so in the, in the midst of this, um, I think I did some sort of snarky comment back to him. I forget what it was. Um, it, was it was like, it love was you too or something. And, uh, uh, <laughs> that's what it was, how many people want to see face? And uh, um, I thought about this and in my life, I've, I've, you know, that was okay. You know, Shane and I, you know, is, is a nice a moment to spend together uh, by this mistaken text. Uh, but I thought of some other instances in my life where I've had a mistaken text or I've had friends that had mistaken texts that the response wasn't so good for. I have a friend that once uh, texted his boss with the complaints about his boss that he thought was intended to his wife. Uh, that creates a very hard situation. Um, I've often texted a friend about something that I thought was supposed to go to my wife as well. Uh, it ended up being that it actually was not meant for me, the kissy faces, it was meant for his, uh, uh, his uh, fiance at the time and now his wife. So I guess that was more appropriate than me, but there was, you know, it was not, <laughs> I guess, nevertheless. So um, in thinking about this, I thought about, hey, uh, you know, who's one person I would not like to send a mistaken text to? I thought about the example of my friend sent a text to his boss uh, where he kind of complained about what his boss was doing. Um, and I was thinking, you know, definitely an enemy would be somebody I would not like to send three kissy faces to. Uh, you know, if I was in a battle or a war, I probably wouldn't send them three kissy faces. And uh, I started thinking about the idea of enemies and um, <clears throat> in giving away some of the hint, you know, we were called to love our enemies. And I started thinking about what exactly is an enemy. Um, and when I philosophically realized that I didn't exactly know what an enemy was, I, I kind of knew what it was in practice, but philosophically I didn't exactly know what an enemy was. Uh, I went to Merriam-Webster and it said an enemy is antagonistic to one or another person, especially for seeking to injure, overthrow, or confound an opponent. Well, then I got to a situation where I didn't even know what antagonistic meant. So I had to look at that up and it said showing dislike or opposition. And then I was like, okay, so exactly what do you mean by confound? And said to throw a person into confusion or perplexity. So an enemy is somebody that shows dis dislike to another person, especially seeking to injure them or overthrow them or throw them into confusion or perplexity uh, uh, to their opponent. And I was questioned with the thought that, you know, can I have an enemy without being an enemy. Is that possible? Um, and um, 
I, my initial thought was, I don't know, maybe you can. And then I was like, well, maybe you can. And I kind of uh, struggled over this a little bit. And then I was reminded of my biggest enemy when I was a child. Uh, so uh, with a raise of hands, don't worry, nobody's watching. Uh, raise your hand if you grew up in the Cold War and remember kind of the worries and the anxiety of growing up in the Cold War. All right, I see none of your hands, so I'm guessing you're all participating. Uh, you know, in the 1980s, uh, the Cold War, we had this political enemy, and, you know, the Cold War, we had the Soviet Union, and we would call them commies. We never met anybody who was a communist. We never met them, but we had all these words that we would use for commies. We'd call them left-wingers, uh, Fabians, Pinko, uh, Bolsheviks, Marcus, Leninists, and we have all these names and these name calling that would go along with uh, the idea of, of these people that were kind of our enemies at the time. Uh, but in looking at that, you know, the idea that an, an enemy is antagonistic to another person and seeking to injure, overthrow, or confuse that person, um, the Cold War, we had a lot of confusion. I mean, uh, if you were growing up in the Cold War, you remember we had drills where we had to hide underneath our desk uh, because a nuclear bomb for some reason could be warded off or you could be protected from a nuclear bomb by your desk, uh, which made no sense. But we they would have these drills where we would hide underneath our desks and somehow that would be a way of protecting us against the radiation of a nuclear attack. Um, but there's a lot of confusion and fear and perplexity that came up at this time uh, in the Cold War. But related to an enemy, I had an enemy, uh, you know, during the Cold War. David Bottlespock was antagonistic to Mikhail Gorbachev. I just did not like that guy. He was my enemy. Uh, but Mikhail Gorbachev was not antagonistic to David Bottlespock. He didn't even know I existed. You know, he wasn't, you know, I wasn't his enemy, uh, but he was my enemy. Um, and uh, I still, with all that said, talking about people being antagonistic and enemies and stuff, I still would not send a kissy faced emoji to Mikhail Gorbachev just to, uh, 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 that one. <laughs> all right, so um, uh, from a Bible verse today, we're going to go over Matthew 543, and it says, love thy neighbors. And Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, so you have heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. Uh, but I tell you the truth, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends the rain. On the I have a musician helping me out this morning. Sorry about that. And he causes the uh, sends the rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the people that do not believe in God or the pagans do that. But be perfect, therefore, in your love as the Heavenly Father is perfect. Um, when Jesus said that you heard it said, uh, do not, uh, you heard it said, love your neighbor, hate your enemies. That was a reference to Leviticus 19.18 from 14. BC that says, do not seek revenge or bear grudges against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as you love yourself. I am the Lord. Uh, so the idea of loving your neighbor and loving those that are kind of kind to you or kind of next to you was, you know, around for a while. But the idea of loving your enemy uh, is very new. Uh, to get to the face, since we're in Valentine's Day and we think all kissy face at this point, to talk about love, um, I'm going to use a reference to C.S. Lewis's book, Four Loves. And C.S. Lewis talked about four different types of love, a storge love, which is kind of like being so familiar with something from a family that you have a love for them and you're bonded to them. It's like the love that a child has to a mom. Uh, he doesn't, that child doesn't decide to love the mom, it just needs a mom. Uh, the Philos love, which is a love between friends, close siblings, um, you know, you know, kind of love that a lot of us show between each other. It's that idea of uh, Philos is where the name, the city of brotherly love came from for Philadelphia, which if you've ever been in Philadelphia, you know that there's some issues with that. And then um, Eros was what C.S. Lewis talked about, about the sense of being in love or this kissy face love and someone, you know, 
you know, and something different than just kind of like a raw love, if you will. And then the love that was used in this passage by Christ was a love that would be more closely related to charity or agape love, a love that exists regardless of change in circumstances, uh, this selfless love. So when we're called to love our enemies, it's like, hey, we're going to love them and make a decision to love them, even though they don't like us, they can't stand us for one reason or another. Um, and uh, the, the hard thing for us in this world is to think of how can we love our enemies, but that person did such a bad thing to me. How can I love them? But that per you don't know what that person did. Uh, how can I love them? And the nice thing is Jesus just gave that to us when he said, love your neighbors. Um, uh, and love your neighbors as yourself and love your enemies as well and pray for those who persecute you. And that is pray for those who persecute you. Uh, prayer is our choice to surrender control in any situation. So uh, love your enemies has been a pretty famous quote over the years. It really is uh, uh, something that transforms um, the idea of Christ compared to a lot of other religious re rulers is that it's very risky to say love your enemies. Uh, Frank Sinatra uh, thought it was so important that uh, he ended up uh, having a quote saying alcohol may be a man's worst enemy but the Bible says to love your enemy. I think that may have been a bit of a missed the mark by Frank Sinatra. I don't know if that's exactly a great quote, but uh, Benjamin Franklin said, love your enemies for they shall tell you all your faults. Um, and that's not really why we love our enemies so they can tell us our faults. It's we love our enemies because God loves our enemies. Um, Gandhi had said that whenever you're confronted with opposition, conquer him with love. Uh, and I think that's a neat idea of the idea that you know love can conquer over opposition. Uh, but at the same point, our goal shouldn't be to conquer somebody with love, it's to love our enemies without that, that outcome. Um, Saint Anquinian Athenian is a um, monk from Russia uh, during the Russian nationalist period right around Nicholas II in the First World War. And he said, a man that cries out against evil men but does not pray for them will never know the grace of God. I think that's important when we're trying to love our enemies. One of the best ways to love our enemies is to pray for our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Uh, Martin Luther King had said, love even for enemies is the key solution of the problems of our world. Um, and later Martin Luther King had said that uh, um, if a man has not discovered something that he, he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Um, and this idea of love is, this is something that is so important that we can kind of give up what we want. We can surrender to an enemy and try to love them even though they're not loving us. And it's something that's worth dying for. Um, so on happy Valentine's Day, I'll kind of close this section with uh, a uh, reference to... Uh, uh, with a reference to Valentine's Day uh, quote. Uh, so this is your Valentine's Day from uh, Christ today. Uh, he said, as the Father has loved me in John 15, 9 through 13, so have I loved you. Abide in love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be fulfilled. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone may lay down his life for his friends. I think a lot of times laying down your life for your friends may not mean that you're uh, you know, going to be killed for your friends. It may just mean that you're laying down your life or your right, to, your pride, your ability to be right, uh, your circumstance what you wish for that day for your friend. And Jesus went on to say, you are my friends if you do what I command. And that's a pretty good Valentine to get from a friend this week. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like my Valentine to be from Christ and him to be our friend. So uh, we're gonna move on in the next section uh, and talk about a uh, technical aspect of uh, terrace grading, but I want to open it up for a couple minutes for any thoughts or discussions related to kissy faces and Valentine's Day. So. Uh, 
I think it was timely. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward to a meeting either this week or next week where we have a con we're working with a contractor who has made overtures towards not liking the design that we're working on. So uh, this should be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, in, in politics this week, we had a, a, a leader that was confronted with the idea of love your enemies um, in word. Uh, and um, I think it's important that we're in such a divided country right now that sometimes we're, we uh, marginalize people and make them into enemies to separate us from loving them. And I think it's important this week that to uh, uh, love our enemies and not marginalize our enemies. Uh, you know, marginalize them by name calling them related to, you know, my experience with uh, my enemies being the Soviet Union during the Cold War. And I had all sorts of names for people I've never met. Uh, and I kind of marginalized them in my mind uh, because it made it easier for me than to love my enemies. All right, I'm going to close with a quick prayer and then we're going to move on to Terrace Graydon uh, for Urban and Natural Channels. Dear God, we're so thankful for this time together. Just please show us what it means to love others. Show us what it means uh, to earnestly seek uh, your face in this world and to be put in examples where we can share and be kind towards others. Um, help us be an example to the world and the people we're around that we show a way of sharing and a way of loving that is different and unique from this world. Uh, we love you and we're thankful for the opportunities you give us this week, the relationships and the experiences that you gifted us. Amen. All right, so now we're gonna move